on the rate first one two three four five so rate is around 60 bits per minute uh rhythm pr 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 sinus so rhythm is sinus axis mm, normal axis normal axis now two three abf two three abf maybe a q here it's okay normal normal t normal fine one avl normal normal v5 maybe some t inversion v6 is all right now v1 uh, some t is stall now here there is biphasic t wave there is t inversion in the later portion so this is the valence pattern this is the valence pattern this is another biphasic t wave so this patient will have presented with central chest pain and a biphasic T wave with the anterior leads V2 to V3. So just this is and also to it's anterior ischemia. And this is known as the valence pattern. This is the valence pattern. Let's check out what Hampton says. So biphasic T waves in the lead V2 to V5. So this is the anterior non-Q wave infraction or also known as valence syndrome or valence pattern valence pattern of ECG. and this is the type a this is the type a pattern what to do the next step to do is go for an angiogram and pci this is our first ecg now let's go to the second ecg shows a 70 year old man who had angina treated with a beta blocker fine Pain similar to angina, but much more severe. Fine, with severe pain, persistent for four hours. What does it show, and what treatment would be appropriate? Let's go through it. Rate is now rhythm. Rhythm seems to be irregular. Let's check out the P waves. So here go on PR, PR. Um, this is a premature complex. Then another PM. This is okay. Sinus. Mm, seems to be sinus, but it's about B1, sinus, sinus, sinus. So sinus, and sometimes you have the premature complexes, sinus with some extra systole. So sinus rhythm with some extra systole is fine. Now rate rhythm axis. Axis is normal, normal axis. Now 2-3-AVF, 2-3-AVF, the QRS is wide, QRS is wide, and slard, slard, slard. T is uh, normal. One AVL, the QRS is wide and has an M pattern. Same the M pattern in V5 and V6. And there is a deep S in the V1. And there is some STT changes. So the inversion and ST depression and hyperactivity. So they're all suggestive of a left bundle branch block. So we have got a sinus rhythm. Sinus rhythm with extra systoles and left bundle branch block pattern. So let's see what our assessment corresponds to the assessment of this book. So this book says sinus rhythm, yes, extra systole, yes. And those extra systole, this extra systole does not have any P, no P wave. As there is no P wave, those are junctional extra systole, or we can say premature junctional complexes, or simply you can say junctional extra systoles. Whenever you have a P in front of the extrasystole, then it is an atrial extrasystole. Whenever you have no P in front of the extrasystole, extrasystole, this is the junctional extrasystole. Broad QRS complex M pattern, those are all suggestive of a left, left bundle branch block. So you have a junctional extrasystole, sinus rhythm, and a left bundle branch block. So LBBB and a junctional extrasystole, or you can also say supraventricular extrasystole. That is our diagnosis here. Let's go to uh, let's go to another ECG. That's a sixty-year-old man, OPD for severe congestive heart failure. Okay, diagnosis. What could be the diagnosis, and what could you do? Okay, let's find out the diagnosis first. So the rhythm seems to be irregular, right? Look at here. The rhythm is irregular. So this is AF. And the baseline is not showing a definite P wave. So this is more of an AF rhythm. The rate, rate is high. So if you count the rate here, like from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So 22 into 10. So that is uh, uh, that is high in a mark compass of 220. The rate is around 220. So if with a fast ventricular rate, fine. Next, uh, let's check at the axis. Um, axis is normal, normal axis. 2, 3 AVF uh, complexes are narrow and short. Fine. 1 AVL seems all right. V5, V6 seems all right. V1 to V4 seems all right. A bit poor progression of R wave here, but otherwise no significant abnormality. So the AF with fast ventricular rate. This is my diagnosis. And now check it out. So the ventricular rate is not controlled. Yes. ST depression suggests taking digoxin. Yes, we have seen some ST depression although not very obvious, which is here and here. There is some ST depression here, but this is not controlled. The ventricular rate is around 200 in some areas. So the rate is fast ventricular rate. So this is an actual fibrillation with a fast ventricular rate with a digoxin effect, digoxin effect. So AF with fast ventricular rate with digoxin effect. So we miss the digoxin effect. We should not miss the digoxin effect. Digoxin effect can be seen in V5 and V6. Okay. Now let's go to the next ECG, which is another nice ECG. 60-year-old man, history of MI. Just a second. A uh, 60 year old man, history of AMI, okay, myelangina, central chest pain now, central chest pain for one hour. Not responding to sublingual nitric, not responding, it could be MI. So let's go through it. Rate one to three, rate is around 100, rhythm, speed, P. Where are you, P? P is not seen well, but still you can appreciate the piece. So rhythm seems to be sinus and regular, okay, regular. So let's say rhythm is sinus and regular, regular sinus rhythm. The axis is normal, axis is normal. Uh, let's go to 2, 3 AVF. There is some Q in the 2, but the Q is more prominent in the 3 and AVF. Could be an OMI inferior, but let's keep it in the back of our head. Let's go to lead one. There is uh, flattening of the T wave and flattening of the T wave here as well. V5, V6 has definite ST elevation. So ST elevation here, 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 and here. So from V1 to V6, you have definite ST elevation all through V1 through V6. So this is in STEMI. Mm, there is some Q in V1, not many Qs. Uh, okay. So though this is a definitely ST elevated MI. So this is acute STEMI. And this involves the anterior and also some lateral areas. So you can say extensive anterior STEMI. So this is extensive anterior STEMI. The patient needs to go through a STEMI protocol. So this is acute anterior infraction, uh, infraction or acute STEMI, acute extensive anterior ST elevated MI or STEMI. Acute extensive anterior STEMI. And the Q in the 3 and AVF suggests the OMI, old MI, inferior. So our diagnosis is correct. Old inferior and acute anterior MI. Done. We are not doing bad. We are doing well. Next is lead 2, 3 AVF. So 15-year-old boy, heart murmur, could be a... BSD or ASD, whatever it is, or PDA, no symptoms. So, okay, what is shown? Physical signs you looked for. Okay, so let's go through it. The rate is around one, two, three, four, five. So around five. So rate is around sixty. So normal. Rhythm is uh, regular, and sinus seems to be regular. So rhythm is regular, and sinus axis is normal. And 2, 3 AVFs uh, is all right. 1 AVL has some slurring of the S, fine. V5, V6, okay. Mm, some ST depression. V1 to V4, 
Now you have the RSR pattern here. So whenever you have RSR pattern and some widening of the QRS, and there is also ST depression and some T inversion. So this is an RBBB pattern. So you have a normal sinus rhythm with RBBB pattern, which is extending to V2 and also V3. Okay, so this is RBBB. And whenever you have RBBB, you have evidence of some sort of right ventricular stress, right ventricular overload maybe, maybe due to AST, maybe, maybe even ASD, could be as the patient has murmur and RBBB is a sign of ASD, especially the secundum ASD, oftentimes have RBBB. And um, the axis is all right. Um, okay, so let's stick out, stick to the ASD, could be ASD. So the ECG diagnosis is the right bundle branch block. Our diagnosis is correct. Sinus rhythm with RBBB, fine. And Let's check out what the diagnosis is. Uh, presence of heart murmur, the possibility of the ASD should be considered, yes. And this is what this patient had. Split second heart sound, fixed and wide splitting of the second heart sound, did not vary with respiration, typical. It's a second. Okay, so our diagnosis was correct. RBBV most likely due to an ASD. Now this is probably our last, our second last one. Let's go through it. What does it say? So this is a 40 year old man, shortness of breath on climbing stairs, could be NYHA two or three maybe. He was not aware of a fast heart rate and had no chest pain apart from a rapid rate. There was no cardiovascular abnormalities. Looked a little jaundiced and had an enlarged spleen. Little jaundice and enlarged spleen. Is it a hemolytic anemia? Little jaundice and enlarged spleen. Is it a hemolytic anemia? I suspect this could be a hemolytic anemia from this short of history. And also has symptoms of anemia. So let's check it out. And so let's go through the rate. The rate is fast, around 150. The rhythm is regular, but look at the morphology of the P waves. Doesn't it look like a sawtooth? So there are sawtooth-like P waves. And let's go through the V1. And V1 has a classic sawtooth P wave. I got my diagnosis. This is actual flutter. And as the rate is around 150, so this must be atrial flutter with two is to one AV block. And let's go through the other diagnosis. So this is atrial flutter with two is to one AV block, two, three AVF shows, okay, the axis is a, there is some sort of left axis deviation, left axis deviation, then one AVL, some, okay, one AVL B5, B6. We cannot appreciate the P waves here, right? It's not appreciated. P waves cannot be appreciated as well uh, that this can be seen in V1 and V2. But otherwise, this seems to be normal, some sort of ST depression. Okay, so let's go through what the book says. So there is a atrial flutter and the rate is around 150, which is correct. So this is atrial flutter with a twist to one AV block. And there is some sort of left axis deviation. This could be a left anterior fascicular block. So that's all. And SYMB6, uh, lung, lung disease, persistent SYMB6, there is SYMB6. So this could be due to lung disease. But overall, our diagnosis is correct. Our diagnosis is actual flutter with two is to one conduction. We are correct. So that's all. 
we have had a good discussion and we practice, I practice and you practice as well. Okay, done. This is from Hamptons 150 ECG by Hampton. Very nice book, Hampton.